Aloha, everybody. I have a truly spectacular one for you here today. I am in Puaco. We are at an oceanfront property. Puaco is one of the most beloved areas on our island. This is an outstanding property. Four bedrooms, four and a half baths, 3,067 square feet with an additional 1,200 square feet of lanai. This has a non-conforming use certificate for short-term vacation rentals. And you're not going to see many things like this. It's currently listed at a price I'll tell you later. But you're going to get it for less than that if you buy it because it is being sold on auction. Concierge Auction is working with Tomoko Matsumoto. We just call her Tomo. Uh, at Apuna Realty, I'd like to say thank you to her for letting me have a chance to bring this property to you. They're going to auction this thing off, and I'll tell you, I'm going to put some links at the end of this video down in the description below to some other properties that have been auctioned as well. And what you're going to find is that these auction properties go for much less than you think most of the time. I'm going to tell you the three things I like most about this spectacular property at the end. And the one thing I would add to it, if I bought this property, this is going to be a long one. You're going to enjoy it. There is a lot to show on 1.6 acres with over 350 feet of ocean frontage and truly some spectacular things that you don't see in most other properties. All right, let's get to it, guys. Okay, so there's going to be so many features on this home. I'm not going to be able to cover it all adequately. I'm going to do my best to point out there's some unique things about this property and this lot because of its location that are truly, uh, truly different, truly unique. The first thing you need to know is that because this was built after a change in our building regulations and its oceanfront, it is elevated off the ground. Now this is really smart. I'm gonna come over here real quick so that you can see that it's a few feet off the ground. This is so in case there is a high water event like a tsunami or even a, a king tide that the house is still secure it's got these massive those are like those are like two and a half feet wide concrete pillars throughout the home and then a concrete base on top of that so if water comes it flows under the home this is important uh, during the fukushima earthquake over in japan one of the houses in kealakekua bay was just on post and pier and you know what it got lifted up became a giant boat swept out to sea in kealakekua bay where it disintegrated and fell apart. This will prevent that. The other thing you're gonna notice is a number of these pools. These are tide pools. I believe the, if I pronounce it right, I believe the word is called Anchiline Ponds. It's kind of like a brackish water pond. And there are a number of them on this property. That presents some real challenges for how they built the house. And they did a really smart thing in the layout, which you'll be able to see when we get inside and we start moving around of how they worked around that restriction. Got plenty of parking here. I like what they did with the concrete, made it look like lava rock uh, with the grass in between, kind of that classic Hawaii thing that we see out here. We got a little storage set over there. Great for keeping your tools. They did some nice job with having some plants and stuff covering up that gap so you don't really notice it so much. You have a gated entry, beautiful iron gate over there. Plenty of parking around the property. You have a lot of space here. There's dozens of palm trees. Pretty amazing. And then spectacular entry as soon as you come inside. There's a lot of things that you expect to see, of course, at this price point, which I haven't told you yet. You're going to have standing seam metal roof. This isn't a stucco home. This is plaster. So really going the extra mile on it. And then you're going to see a tremendous amount of woodwork. I'm going to take you up here. They even have a ceiling treatment here at the entry. Pretty nice. We're going to step up, and the first thing you notice is 18-inch travertine flooring. This impressive door. You have a security system with a camera there. You got lighting for art niches outside before you even step into the house. Kind of telling you that you're going to be in something special. And then I'll take you right in here to the front. And obviously the first thing you're going to notice is this super wide opening for this uh, large Fleetwood style 
sliding door. I know I usually like to tease you guys and wait for the ocean view. There's no way to do it here. Through the house, out to this massive outdoor covered lanai, and there's Puaco. The absolute finest snorkeling and diving that you will find in the state of Hawaii right out there. A very popular shoreline spot. I'll take you out onto the property a little bit later. We're gonna start with the house here. You can see you got steps going right out. And check that out. A walkway covered out to some more of the house. I wonder what's there. Let's spin around real quick and see what we got. Massive amount of space here. I would estimate that we're looking at about a 20 by 30 uh, lanai out here. Massive table. They have these big chairs. You could easily fit 10 people at that table. That thing's about six feet across in diameter. Plenty of space out here. This house is sold completely furnished. Mine's for a couple, like five or six pieces of art. Of course, we have recessed lightings. We have uh, a speaker system throughout the home, including outdoors, a propeller style ceiling fans here and in other rooms in the house. Large outdoor grill ready to go for your entertaining kitchen here quartz countertops and then this is you're going to just be looking at tons of custom features a custom uh, entire wall for displaying for holding your sound system everything right in there and our ceiling treatment you have one, two, three, four, five speakers up in here. Massive, beautiful table. Top of the line hardware on the windows. And you're looking out to one of those Anschline ponds right there. Super cool. The kitchen is massive and really wide and totally connected to the rest of the house like everybody wants. We have this large island here with a nice different accent, different uh, countertop. Looks like a granite, um, different from our quartz over here. And of course, obviously, as you might expect, dovetail joints, soft clothes, obviously on everything in here. And I often show you guys some of the things to pay attention to uh, on these countertops. And we've seen this, I think maybe once before. I'm not sure the video is still up. So you guys already know that you can put a piece of quartz. And then you know that you can have another piece that gets attached on here to the bottom. This one though, when they attach it, they cut this top piece at a 45, and then this vertical piece they also cut at a 45. Much, much, much harder to do that. And what it leaves you with is an almost invisible seam when they do it that way. Pretty spectacular. We have a Bosch dishwasher, large stainless steel sink, commercial style faucet, Thermador six burner grill, stainless vent like the frosted glass that they have here on our cabinets in the let's see here we got our microwave is a Bosch and our oven is also a Bosch and then we have a Viking D3 side by side refrigerator on top with the drawer on bottom I'm gonna move quickly away from the music so we don't get demonetized here and we're gonna work our way down to the owner's wing of the house. We're gonna stop along the way. First of all, we have a half bathroom in here. So we got our travertine tile, perfect powder room. Look at that custom sink, nice. And I love this tile that they did on the back. It's like some sort of a mat, and then they have to do all this grout work in between. Looks really sharp, it's gorgeous. Let's come down the hall a little bit more and see first one of our guest bedrooms. Has its own in-suite bath. Let 
perfect large mirror and that slides open so you have some uh, it's a medicine cabinet down behind and then your shower we have a glaze looks like oh no it's a textured uh oh it is glazed and has this nice little lines in it that looks great i like it with the stone bottom excellent oh and then the other thing turn your water faucet on over here it doesn't matter if you get a 10 million dollar house it still takes a couple seconds for the water to heat up because it's got to go through the line so you're staying nice and comfortable not getting cold water splashed on you you guys know i like that we have a large walk-in closet here with a built-in down below and a real wood shelving excellent attic access we have a ceiling treatment in this guest bedroom as well the propeller fan that we've seen before i like this inlay that they did with the wood here where the bed goes we have a queen size bed about six feet on either side plenty of space a slider looking out to your ocean view and this is just the guest bedroom boy that glass was so clear i, I touched it and then a nice built-in over here as well Pushing through, I can't show you guys everything. I'll be here forever. Yeah. We have a utility room, no cheap uh, solid surface in here. We're using that same quartz, with that same finish on the edge, washer and dryer, some storage up there, plenty of storage down below, massive four foot wide doors. We're looking great. And then we come into here to the owner's wing. Double door entry. Yeah. And let's turn in here to the bathroom. We got our dual sinks with our mirrors and a window looking out there. Privacy door on our water closet to the right. Over to the left, I like what they're doing here. I've seen, I'm seeing this more and more. I'm glad to see it coming to Hawaii. But having this large freestanding tub, you, know, you gotta plan that out. You know, your water's not in the wall now. It's coming up through the bottom and your drains there through the bottom. So you really have to have everything dialed in just right. But you also have your shower right in here. Tile all the way up to the ceiling. We have our rain shower coming down, large piece of glass to prevent the spraying. So you walk right through here and you are set. And then we have this frosted glass here for the closet. Plenty of space here. And then check out that built-in. Excellent. And then this is our owner's suite. So we're coming into our bedroom and check that out. That's what you get to wake up to. We got corner sliders here. Same excellent woodwork that we saw on the floor of our guest bedroom. Yeah, just taking the sound. I love the hanging lights that they have here on either side. Poster bed with the canopy, the large built-in. Super excellent job. And let's check out that ceiling treatment. This is like the one that we saw in the living room. You see we also have our speakers here as well. So this is the hottest part of the year. So it's September, what, 5th or 6th? And windows are open. Doors are open and everything's great. You can feel it all. All right, so I'm gonna jump to the other side of the house and pick it up there. Okay, so now I'm back at our walkway. We got the, uh, the main house over here. We got that large lanai in the living area to give you some perspective for where we are. And we have our steps going down. I'll check out the ground for you here later. Going off at about a 45 degree angle from this corner, is what they did that's really smart. I really like that they did this. A lot of people would have given up and said, you know, I got the pond over here and I got the pond over here. So I'll build my house here and just let it go. Well, you still have this corner over here and they really did a great job utilizing it. They made this very impressive walkway. They could have done this cheap. Of course, nothing's gonna be cheap in a house like this. So, you know, we've got these huge Boy, this is about 18 inch, 20 inch wide square columns, all plaster there. No board and batten on this house. And you did the wood treatments up here as well. They didn't have to do that. They could have just put a basic cover here. 
but that wouldn't be keeping in line with the house. And then what we're gonna have over here is really interesting. Now, you're only allowed to have one oven in a single family residence, and they have that, but you are allowed to have other fridge, refrigerators, and you can have sinks as well. So we have this large hallway that goes off into two separate guest suites. So, excellent job on that. And again, the in-suite bathroom, large shower. Again, they have our, rain, our shower head over here, but our faucet on this side, doing it smart. We have a different countertop here. I like this. Look how large that skirt is that comes down. Excellent. Looks gorgeous. Coming through, we still have our own built-in closet with the storage, with the uh, dresser built in there. Walk-in closet with a dresser built in. That's what it is, Mike. And you're super close to the ocean right here. Looking right out. This bed's a little bit lower. I kind of like it. Gives you more of a sense of vertical space. Our same ceiling treatment, speakers, ceiling fans that we've seen in our other rooms. Nice little nook here. Set your laptop up. You gotta do a little bit of work these days even while you're on vacation. You just can't get away, which I found out recently. Out to our property, a little bit more that way. And then let's come through to our final bedroom, bedroom number four. Again, walk-in closet with a built-in. It's a little bit bigger than our last closet, so I would say this is maybe bedroom three, maybe even bedroom two, really. Yeah, given the size. Now, they have this set up as a sitting room. So this is, this is interesting. They set this up as a suite, so you have your bedroom right next door where we were, and then this is a living space, so this pod is sort of all its own little living space. Slider outside again. Dual sinks. Got an owner's lockout over there. Have this much larger walk-in shower. Yeah, this is bedroom two to me, if we're ranking the bedrooms. And high ceilings here in the bathroom. Giant windows. Okay, wow, check out the size of that window. That is massive. Each pane there is like six foot by six foot. Incredible. Okay, next I'm going to be outside putting my slippers on and I'll show you the property and of course the beach. Okay, I'm making my way down the steps off the uh, that awesome lanai that we have. And I'm going to show you a few things to where this is where the house really differentiates itself from anything I think I've shown you before. I've shown you some oceanfront houses, but I haven't shown you one like this. I don't think I've shown you a house in Puaco before actually. So we have this nice little outdoor shower. Great for rinsing off after you're at the beach. Obviously you'd have tons of, you know, you could store all kinds of stuff under here if you needed to. I like the, the walkway, the, I guess you call it a walkway, whatever it is, that we have out here with our uh, salt textured concrete. So making this an additional living space. All these palm trees that you have. And then as we get close to the water, the grass gives way to sand. Got this huge rock wall. So if you do get some water, come up. You got a nice rock wall here to help you. And stepping out. Here we go just walk in the ocean literally walk right in the ocean there it is and this is actually a pretty good spot for me I would actually come right here and I take that path and right there and I'm diving so you see the light color that sand darker color is lava rock and you get off beyond the edge there you've got reef oh, I'm, I'm it's not going to come through. We've got needlefish right here in the water I'm looking at. And then, I don't remember the name of this plant. If you know, let me know in the comments. 
you see it along the water. It's like a, you see it at the beech tree at Four Seasons. It looks like you have some that have died now, so I've definitely removed those. Uh, make it look even better. And get all of our coral rocks that we have here on the big island washed up. Pretty awesome. And look how far down our property goes. This wall continues. It's 350 feet of shoreline frontage. So looking over there in the distance, I can see I can see both big hotels. So there's the Hapuna Hotel. Hapuna, it's not Prince anymore. I can't remember who owns it. Weston. And then over a little further, Mauna Kea. And this is a really uh, calm and protected area for water on the big island. Um, and it's a great spot. There will be tons of whales out here in the winter time. So pretty awesome location for that. And then looking back at this spectacular house. Okay, so it is listed at $8.95 million. I'm willing to bet you that it goes for closer six or seven million. It's on an auction. Now you guys may remember I brought an auction property to you that was a uh, kind of a working little mini hotel, boutique hotel up in Coloco almost a year ago maybe. Maybe it was a year ago. And that thing, when I saw the final sales price, I was blown away. And every time I look at one of these auction properties, I'm always shocked at the price that it actually goes for. It's a no reserve auction. Basically, you give me a call, we get you set up with the auction. There's a buyer's premium of 12%. I believe it's a 6% credit back of your opening bid amount. They take those opening bid amounts, they send them to the seller. They go, hey, here's our opening bids. Who knows how high it's gonna go? Seller's okay with the opening bids. The auction moves forward. Once the auction moves forward, it's a no reserve auction. It's getting sold no matter what. Seller can't get out at that point. And if you're the person who's left, it's your property. So let's say you think this is worth $7 million, come in with an opening bid of $5 million. 6% of that $5 million will come back to you of that opening bid off the price that you have to add back in the 12%. So that keeps people from coming in saying, oh, I'll give you a $1 million offer as an opening bid and we'll see where it goes. Well, if you do that and you win, you still may win, you become the top bidder if the seller allows the auction to continue because someone else had a higher bid but you only get six percent of that one million dollar back i would come in pretty close to my top price um and then go from there so the two that i've uh, been that i've looked closely at over the years both went for a lot less Hey guys, I'm going to jump in here and just show you a few examples of properties that were listed by Concierge Auction. They get these things sold and it often sells for millions less than the list price, but you can't participate unless you throw your hat in the ring. I would encourage you to do that if this is something that you might be interested in. Twice we've seen it happen where clients have said, and this was one of the properties, they said, you know, it's going to go for more than I'm willing to pay. Never mind. Turns out it sold for less than they would have paid on it. You got to throw your hat in the ring if you're interested, though. These things really can be some great opportunities for you. The last one is the one that got away for me. Had a client interested, but they thought it was going to go for about six or seven million, which was more than they were willing to pay. Listed at 10 million, sold for less than half that. Uh, let me know if this is something you're interested in. These can be great deals. We are now ready for my list of the three things that I like most about the property and the one thing I would add. Okay, what do I like most about this property? Number one, it's a spectacular oceanfront property and it has a non-conforming use certificate, meaning you can operate a short-term vacation rental here. I can't even begin to think what this will go for a night. I'm thinking on the order of 5,000 plus, but maybe I'm wrong. I mean, how many things like this can you find? This is pretty spectacular. We could find out from them what they're getting a night. So number one, it's a spectacular oceanfront property with a short-term vacation rental. What I like about number two, well, I'm all about those outdoor areas. You guys might know that by now. The number two thing that I like about this property is this large 
covered lanai that we have here. So I make my way back upstairs to look at it again. This is the spot. You're just gonna sit here most days, read your book, enjoy yourself, and check out your ocean view. The third thing I like best about the property is the intelligent use of the space that they had to work with. It's 1.62 acres, but it has multiple ponds in here. And they didn't let that stop them from having a truly impressive and grand house with this design over here. I really love what they did on that. So, and the question is, what would I change about this property? Well, not much. <laughs> I'd probably maybe extend this walkway out a little bit more all the way to our steps and I'd remove the dead trees if I could technically on state land I'd remove the dead trees there to kind of uh, open it up a little bit more and maybe open it up by doing something with that tree there but that's about it I wouldn't really change much of anything with this property totally love it all right I hope you liked it as much as me uh, truly one of the best properties that we've ever brought you guys I'm Mike Drutar. I'm your guide for all things Hawaii real estate. Call me or email me if you ever have any questions, and I'll see you again real soon.